The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that we may follow the example of your faithful servant Barnabas, who, seeking not his own renown, but the well being of your church, gave generously of his life and substance for the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, 
to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its towns lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say Psalm 112, found on page 755. Psalm 112, page 755 in unison. Alleluia. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desire of the wicked will perish. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, also proclaiming, <coughs> Hellenists also proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they met with the church and taught a great many people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world, and this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Now in the church of, at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the, work, for the work to which I have called them. 
Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve, As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you wanted to make Barnabas famous nowadays, or if you wanted to make a movie about Barnabas, I think that the trailer or the internet video or, or the uh, Instagram reel would go something like this. Imagine what it's like to be Barnabas for a moment. Because Barnabas was an early adopter of Christianity. He showed up early in the Acts of the Apostles and handed them the proceeds of some sweet real estate liquidation and proceeded to become one of the rising stars, the foremost followers of the church in Jerusalem. And Barnabas is quickly trusted so much that he is sent to preach in one of the biggest, most important places in the Roman Near East, the capital of the eastern part of the empire, Antioch. And here is where things change for Barnabas. Because as this rising star is doing his work and experiencing growth in the church of God and in his ministry, he realizes he needs help. Even as his followers begin to be called Christians for the first time, he realizes he needs help and he goes and recruits some new guy from Tarsus named Saul. And Saul eventually becomes Paul. And not too long after that, the Acts of the Apostles changes the way it speaks about this duo. 
from Barnabas and Paul to talking about Paul and Barnabas, and eventually Paul and his companions. Then Barnabas fades into obscurity and dies a martyr's death in his home in Cyprus. If someone today was making a movie about Barnabas, they might tell the story this way in this sort of narrative of the young promising apostle turned second banana to Paul. But I suspect if Barnabas got wind of this, that Barnabas would not want this movie to be made. That Barnabas would say, no, 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 no. Uh, because then the story would be about Barnabas. And that would be something the saint could not abide. This is the same Barnabas who talked about Jesus Christ so much in Antioch that they made fun of him by calling him a Christian. Christian. For Barnabas, it was never about him. Not when he comes to Jerusalem from Cyprus, liquidates all of his real estate holdings, and gives all the money to the apostles. Not when he goes to Antioch and enjoys great success in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone who will listen, Jew or Gentile. And not when he calls Paul and becomes second banana to Paul in many respects in the church. At no time is it about Barnabas. He's never seeking his aggrandizement. There are people who go to the apostles and try to give them money, seeking their own lifting up. But that's another story in the Acts of the Apostles with another outcome for another time. For Barnabas, who learned from the apostles, who learned from Jesus, it was always about what God had done in the person of Jesus that was really the focus. Not about Barnabas, but about Jesus. And if about Jesus, about God. Because that's how Jesus worked as well, right? In today's gospel, Jesus doesn't say, go to all the towns around Judea and say, Jesus is really cool. Jesus is really neat. Let me tell you about Jesus. No, Jesus says, go into all the towns in the area and say, the kingdom of heaven has come near. God has come near. Don't preach about me. Preach about the kingdom of God. And show the kingdom of God through radical reliance on what God will provide. Just as Abraham did, and Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and everyone all down through the ages, just as they did, rely, show the kingdom of God has come near by relying on God and making your preaching about God. God's kingdom. Elsewhere in the Gospels, Jesus says to those who he has just healed from leprosy, not say thank you, like I would say to my child when I had done something for them, but not aren't I great? No, Jesus says, go find a rabbi pay the tax for miraculous healing, they ought make the offering to God for a miraculous healing at the synagogue or temple. That's what is right to do. It is not about me, it is about God. Jesus was not interested in his own lifting up, but in the lifting up of God and God's love for the world. Jesus was the connection point, the linchpin, but Jesus never made something of that. Rather, Jesus made it about God and God's love for the world. Because Jesus was about us. One of my beloved mentors was an excellent high school church camp chaplain. He did it for many years. As far as I know, he still does it. 
And being a former Baptist before he became an Episcopal priest, he spent a lot of his time working with high school and college students, uh, getting them to think about the principles that they wanted to live by as adults, as they stood right on the precipice of adulthood. And one of the ways he did this in the camp setting was that he would start and end every one of his sermons, because we had a sermon every day at the Eucharist at the beginning of the day at church camp. He would start and end every one of his sermons at church camp with a call and response that you learned on the very first day. The very first thing that this chaplain would teach the kids was this call and response, where he would say in a loud, booming voice, if it ain't about Jesus, and they would respond, it ain't about nothing at all. Back and forth. And obviously it had an impact because it stuck with me for 20 years. That's terrifying to say. Um, if it ain't about Jesus, it ain't about nothing at all. If it ain't about Jesus. Well, what is Jesus about? What does that mean if it ain't about Jesus? It means something, but I would say that to understand what he meant, we have to understand first Jesus and what Jesus is about. Because that is maybe more important. Jesus was about God and God with us. Jesus was about us. Jesus loved us. He lived and died and rose again and ascended to the right hand of God for us. So that that spark of divinity that we were created with, that breath of God that lives in each one of us, could live in a new transformed world that God has envisioned since the very beginning of creation. Jesus is about us, and especially about us when we are poor, about us when we are mourning, about us when we are sick or imprisoned or persecuted. Jesus is about us regardless of our language, of our race, of how we express our gender or whom we love. Jesus is about us. Jesus is about loving us. And if, it, and if that is what Jesus is about, then when we say, if it ain't about Jesus, it ain't about nothing at all, what we meant, what we mean, is that if Jesus is about us and is faithful to us and loves us, then we must respond in kind. We, if we are to be about Jesus, to dwell on the things that are about Jesus, the love of Jesus, the faithfulness to Jesus who has been faithful to us, if we who have received without payment are to then give without payment as Jesus commands the disciples to do in this morning's gospel, then we have to be about Jesus in the same way that Jesus was about us. We have to be about all those who contain the breath of God, that sliver of divinity within us as integral parts of our being in the same way that Jesus was and is. We have to be about all people, especially when they are poor, when they are mourning, when they are imprisoned or sick or persecuted. We have to be about all people, regardless of what language they speak, what race we call them, what gender they express, what person they love. We have to be about the people that Jesus is about. We should be about Jesus the same way that Jesus is about us.
Barnabas would not want a movie about himself, nor I think would I. Because I am flawed. Most of us, I think, if we're honest, would say that we are too. Barnabas certainly would have said he was. After all, he fought with Paul. He and Paul had silly fights and serious fights. Probably more than even are captured in the Acts of the Apostles. But, it, but Barnabas knew it was never about him. Not when he gave away his money. Not when he had massive success in Antioch. Not when he and Paul came to blows over Barnabas' nephew, John Mark. It was always about Jesus. Always about Jesus, about who Jesus was for and being for those same people. Preaching the good news that Jesus had lived and died and rose again for us. All of us. That's what it means to be a saint. To be for Jesus and for everyone that Jesus loves. Especially those who Jesus keeps close to his heart. If we take following Jesus seriously, if we want to take to heart the invitation that Jesus gives to the apostles in this morning's gospel, if we, like the song says, want to be a saint of God as well, then we have to be about the world as Jesus was. It ain't about Jesus. It ain't about nothing at all. But if it is about Jesus then let us be about that same work that Jesus was for all the people that Jesus came for. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal and begotten.
forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people today, we'll use Form 6, which is on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Melissa, our bishop provisional, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand and Polynesia, Michael, the presiding bishop, the Diocese of Michigan, Milwaukee, and Missouri, and the Office of African Descent Ministries, the Diocese of Olympia for Melissa, our bishop provisional, the bishop's search committee, Christ Church in Tacoma, Holy Family of Jesus Church in Tacoma, for this congregation, for Teresa, our intern, and for the vestry serving this parish and all others in leadership in this congregation. For the nation and all in authority, for Joseph, Kamala, Jay, Terry, Cecile, and Fawn. For the welfare of the world, especially all victims of the conflicts in Ukraine and Sudan. And for those affected by earthquake, fire, flood, and mass shootings. Pray for all those who need healing, especially Judy, Kathy, Kathy, Ginny, Scott, Sharon, Jean, Ken, Teresa, Mary, Richard, Fritz, Carol, Jean and Dick, Andy, Viola, Cordelia, Jan, Cleo, Michael, Jay, Mary, Richard, and Luella. We pray for all those in the armed forces and their families. And we pray for our enemies. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We give thanks for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth, especially J.P. and John. For those celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, especially Betty, Robert, Tom, Judy, and Sharon. For those celebrating the anniversary of their marriage. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for Daisy. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated for a moment. Welcome to all. We're glad you're here with us this morning, however you are joining us. It's wonderful to have you. A few brief announcements. The first of which is that uh, we continue on our efforts to create the perfect bulletin. Uh, however, that moment is not this week. Um, I have seen the enemy, and he is me. Uh, there are two corrections to hymns this morning. The first of which is the communion hymn. That hymn is number 332. 332 is the hymn at the communion. And the last hymn, which is properly called the hymn at the retiring procession, but everyone calls the closing hymn. The closing hymn is hymn 293. 293. I will remind you of, the two, of that one right before we go. So the one you really need to remember right now is the communion hymn, which is 332. If you missed gardening yesterday, if you weren't able to make it to the work party or decided not to come because it was raining, uh, and you have this itch to garden that needs to be scratched and you have already done everything you need to do in your garden or don't want to do your garden because you'd rather do somebody else's garden, but you can walk away from at the end, then I invite you to come tomorrow at 1030 and work in the memorial garden uh, with uh, other members of the church. Tomorrow is the uh, monthly Memorial Garden Work Party. Uh, you're very cordially invited to come at 10.30. Stay for as short or as long as you want to and uh, sort of bask in the beauty of the garden as we uh, do some general. <coughs> there are other announcements in your bulletin and especially in our online e-newsletter, uh, the font. I hope that you are signed up for the font. You can do so on our website. And I hope uh, that we will see you again very soon. Now, Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts. <laughs>
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in the words, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your, your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Barnabas and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God to the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. <coughs> the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now let us all sing together hymn 293. 293. <laughs>
Go in peace to love and serve the 